Hello there, um, so this is a video on tendon healing and it's following on from a video that I did uh, previously where we looked at some of the anatomy and histiology of a uh, tendon and the reason for the video is that there's just not a lot of um, information out there that I could find which um, explained a lot of the physiological processes that go on uh, behind tendons and of course it's a big part of clinical practice so I thought I would um, put some put some videos up to explain some of the biology and, and physiology behind it. So we'll go right back into it. So right here is just a wee um, histological uh, picture of the tendon that we can refer back to to help explain some of the stuff that's going on during, during the um, healing process. So first of all, there are three stages of tendon healing that occur. And these stages I've written out here, okay? and they massively overlap with each other and also have varying degrees in which each one of them will last for and of course the degrees in which they last for is a typical the, the, the number of the days i'm going to give are typical representations of a typical tendon of a typical injury they can obviously um, vary greatly okay so the first stage is the inflammatory stage which is typical of any uh, injury and this this typically lasts for about seven uh, zero to seven days sorry so for about a week and what's occurring here well like with any um, tissue you've got blood vessels running through the tendon okay and they get disrupted here they get um, take that back they get disrupted there and so you get bleeding that's going to occur and when you get bleeding you're going to get clotting so you're going to get your um, intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors kick off and get your platelet aggregation and you, you'll get a fibrous clot that will occur. And this is typical of, you know, of any injury. I did mention in the other video that tendons don't have a rich blood supply and that's true. But there's still enough that you're going to get this, uh, this bleeding that's going to occur and, and therefore clot formation that's going to come over the area. And this will, of course, bring up swelling and pain, and you're going to get release of cytokines that are going to, you know, induce all that. This structure here, by the way, is the tendon sheath, or it's also going to represent the epitendon as well. Okay, so initially, when you first get first injure the tendon, you're going to get bleeding, which is then going to clot, and that's going to form a fibrous cap over the area and you're going to get swelling and inflammation occurring in that area. Now I mentioned cytokines are going to be released. Now there's two very important cytokines that are released with regard to tendon healing that we need to talk about. The first one is platelet derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta. These are the really important ones associated with tendon healing. Okay. And what they're going to do is, amongst a whole host of things which we won't go into, they're, one of the main things with regards to tendon healing that they're going to do is they're going to activate fibroblasts or tenocytes. Now, if you watch my previous video, these two are, are interchangeable to a degree that the fibroblasts um, are tenocytes and tenocytes are fibroblasts, but just within the tendon. Okay, so these cytokines are going to be getting released out and that will trigger the proliferation of these two so they're going to go up okay now that leads us on to our next stage the reparative stage or repair stage or also known as the proliferated proliferative stage I can barely pronounce that so this typically lasts for about three to 60 days okay so we'll start tailing off at the 60 days and as you can see this crosses in between um the the infl inflammatory stage as well actually just another important note to mention about the inflammatory stage is you you also at about um day four get an increase in macrophages and neutrophils to the area and they're just cleaning up the debris that would be expected with any injury so clearing um Know, clearing debris that's going around to help prevent infection also just to clean the area up because you can't have all the stuff lying around when you're trying to repair so so that's that so we're moving to the reparative stage okay so three to sixty days 
approximately. And this can be split into two stages, okay? So you have the extrinsic stage. Now, bear with me in this, okay? So if we go back to our histology, you can see that there is an area, oh, sorry, an area called the endotendon, which contains the endocyte, sorry. Now surrounding the tendon, as we've discussed previously, is a tendon sheath, okay? And within that, there is also tenocytes. Now these tenocytes here are much more readily responsive than the tenocytes that are within the endotendon. And that's because they're not as mature and they're not as numerous as the ones that are in the tendon stage, in the um, epitendon. So you're getting this release of the platelet drive growth factor and the TGF beta, okay? And what this is doing is this is causing the tenocytes that are extrinsic to the tendon to come in. So fibroblast tenocytes are coming in to the wound area, okay? And what they're doing, and this is really important, is they are synthesizing type 3 collagen, okay? And that's really important that we remember it's type 3. So what does that look like? Well, it's not very strong and it's not regular. It's all over the place and it's messy and it doesn't follow the lines of stress, okay? And this is important because it will correlate clinically um, the clinical management of tendon healing. And as you may remember from my previous video, the type of collagen that's usually present or is, you know, 95 plus percent um, present in the tendon is type 1. So this is not the right type of collagen. This is almost like a, you know, a, 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 a sort of a, I can't even think, um, a pavement laying down of this. You also get something called fibronectin getting laid down. And this is just a, a glycosaminoglycan or, or proteoglycan. And this is a scaffold. That's what, that was the word that I was looking for for this, a scaffold um, getting ready to lay down the type one. Um, but this fibronectin is very important for the vascular uh, network that's going to be laid back down. And this allows the vessels to form more appropriately throughout the wound again. And that's following the fibronectin, okay? Now, in an about week, Four, okay, about week four, you get sufficient maturation and proliferation of the intrinsic tenocytes, okay, so they become more activated and migrate into the wound area. And what they do is they now lay down type, we'll do this in a different color actually, they lie down type one collagen okay so we're now got the collagen that we want for the tendon okay and it follows lines of stress okay and it's a much stronger tougher type of collagen it's what your bones and your skin and tendons are made out of and that will follow lines of stress as i said now importantly as well is that they also release mmps and these will start to degrade the type three that's present, okay? And this will continue right through the whole proliferative stage um, and, and into the next stage as well. So what have we had so far? We've had our inflammatory stage, which is typical of any wound that will occur where you've got bleeding followed by a clotting process and there's edema and cytokines being released which cause pain and restrict the movement of the of the joint or the the injured site. The important cytokines that we need to take into account are platelet derived growth factor and TGF beta, okay? And that is going to promote the proliferation and maturation and migration of fibroblasts or tenocytes. And within about the day four mark, we'll get an, uh, a massive increase in macrophage and neutrophil concentration, which is clearing up the debris. We then, at the same time, the reparative stages started, and that lasts for about three to 60 days. And this involves an intrinsic stage and an intrinsic stage. The extrinsic stage um, is where you have tenocytes that are derived from the epitendon and from the tendon sheath, and basically anywhere out with the tendon that migrate into the area and lay down type three 
collagen, which is not as strong, nor the type of collagen that we actually want for the tendon. We also have fibronectin being laid down, which allows for the vascular network to be brought back, or um, more efficiently organised within the tendon. At about week four, we get intrinsic tenocyte activation, and they lay down type 1 collagen along the lines of stress. Now, this whole area within the tendon is called granulation tissue, which I'm sure you've heard of. And this is just connective tissue with lots of different uh, proteoglycans and gags and you know, various um, fluid that's going to promote the tendon healing. And this, this stage is you know, obviously a good stage that's occurring here. Now, we move on to the final stage, the remodeling stage. And this is the most variable um, in length that can occur. And it's typically 20 to 180 days. And again, this you know, massively varies, you know, depending on the age of the person, the type of injury, um, you know, the blood supply to that particular tendon. Um, it's, it's going to very, very um, vary in each person. Now, what we get here is basically continuing um, remodeling, <laughs> hence in the name. Um, we get more parallel fibers. So I know I've drawn them up in this other stage pretty parallel, but they become even more parallel and they align more accordingly to the lines of stress. And at this point, the tendon is really starting to be moved again. You've got a reduction in the cytokines that were causing pain. And um, so the person's probably starting to move it a little bit more and, and that will help organize them. You also get another thing going on called cross linking. And this is where the collagen fibers themselves start to cross link with each other and become stronger by doing that, and this is through uh, various proteins binding with the amino acids within the collagen. And I'm just scroll back up to this picture here. So you can see each collagen is made of three tropical collagens creating a collagen, but then they go into microfibrils and that's where they join together due to the cross linking. And that's what's occurring in this remodeling stage that's going on. So we've had our, um, taking it off from week four, we've had our intrinsic tenocytes activated releasing type one and they've started releasing MMPs which are also still being released in the reparative stage as well. MMPs are still being released here and you've got more um, formation along the lines of stress and then cross-linking that's starting to occur and will continue to occur and that is the physiology behind tendon healing in a nutshell. Just like any other sort of physiological healing that occurs in the body it follows a fairly similar stage of you know inflammation repair and remodeling um, IRR um, but the the different the, the main sort of thing here is that you get type 3 collagen going into type 1 and this is due as I've mentioned to the extrinsic tenocytes following into the intrinsic tenocytes so I won't go too much into the clinical aspects of this because I'm sure everyone knows clinically how to manage this or has a good idea but it, it sort of makes sense um first of all you know anywhere in and around these stages is where you, you know you don't you don't really want to um, move the joint or move the move the injury because it's weak and it's not ready to be done but then of course these stages you do want to start moving because you want the the collagen fibers to align to the to the stress and, and to the right way that it should be so you know you do things like eccentric uh movements and you know very slow passive movements building up into stronger and stronger movements um yeah so i think that's about it it explains it pretty much what's going on the tendon will never fully recover to the same strength it'll always remain about 85 percent of of what it was um, and again, as I mentioned, this is highly uh, variable depending on which tendon type of injury and where. I guess another thing to sort of highlight is that if the tendon is actually cut all the way through, say it was a complete tear, they, it won't heal. It will need to be, there will need to be surgical uh, involvement here to bring the two sides together to allow this to occur. You know, they won't just find each other again. So, yep. Thank you very much.